first start from the year 2010 in Christ Church. I would like to hear how how did it all start for you guys? How did it all begin? Uh, well, three of us were playing in a band uh, previously called Sacrament, and we were just basically like a, just a death metal band. Um, and we kind of wanted to take it a step further. And uh, that's when we got Nick and Stace involved in the band. And um, from there, we kind of uh, made our first EP, um, obviously ended up on that kids TV show, which was pretty strange. But, um, you know, yeah, like, a, you know, we're just a bunch of best friends playing music. That's that's really what it comes down to. Okay. And how did you end up with the, the band name Blindfolded and Led to the Woods? Uh, well, I mean, coming up with band names is is so hard, you know, and all of the good ones are already taken. So <laughs> you end up like with a whole sentence, which is kind of what happened to us. But um, we were just at a bit of a, um, uh, you know, some drinks with some friends and and uh, it just kind of happened, you know, and, and then that was it. That was our band name. There was yeah, no, no real <laughs> crazy story behind it. It just kind of stuck. <laughs> Okay, uh, I'm always fascinated about the scenes in uh, in uh, places far away from here. So, uh, of course, from New Zealand, uh, what also comes to mind is Ulcerate. But, uh, well, as you said, you were just a bunch of friends who started the band back in 2010. How is the scene back there and has it changed over the last 10 years? Um, the scene here is really strong at the moment. I think it's... Um... You know, like like most places, it probably like goes in, in ebbs and flows. But right now, uh, we've got bands like Ulcerate, obviously, who are just like amazing on a global scale. Um, bands like Organectomy as well, who are just absolutely killing it worldwide right now. Um, and then there's a bunch of young bands that are coming through that are all really great as well. So I think at the moment, we've got a really, a really healthy scene. And we're kind of lucky in New Zealand right now because we can actually play shows um you know we can we can tour our own country we can't go anywhere else but um we're lucky in the fact that we can we can still play shows and and you know we're we're planning a bit of a tour at the moment for once the album's out um so yeah we're, we're really lucky that we can do that and and have a healthy scene at the moment because so many people can't can't play music right now <laughs> and it's crazy yeah, as I understand, even the like bigger festivals in New Zealand are going ahead. So, what are your plans plans for for touring? Yeah, well, like like you said, the big the bigger festivals are going ahead. And just at New Year's, we played uh, at a at a massive festival that was kind of like um, everything from like drum and bass to dubstep to crazy underground music. But actually, us and Organectomy played, and and there was like, you know, two and a half, three thousand people at that festival, just totally underground, outdoors for like five days. It was pretty cool. Um, but for our tour, we're we're probably going to hit like maybe eight, eight, uh, eight cities around New Zealand, and um, yeah, yeah. There, there's like New Zealand's a small country, so <laughs> like. Um, if we hit like eight cities, that's like quite a comprehensive tour in New Zealand. Um, there's a lot of small places that we could go to, but you know, they're so small that the middle isn't really going off. So we just hit those like larger centers. Yeah. So pro probably be eight dates, but hopefully we can get into Australia, um, you know, later on this year as well. Yeah, that sounds amazing uh, and a bit <laughs> far away at the moment in here. But yeah, let's go to the nightmare withdrawals then. Uh, so was this the difficult third album? <laughs> um, I think that actually it was probably our easiest. Um, the other albums that we've done, I think we, because we like to make music that's a bit different, a bit like out of the box. I think we were, you know, finding our sound in those first two albums, but but now that we've kind of matured in a way, I guess um, 
we've kind of defined our sound and I, you know, it actually made the whole process a lot easier because we kind of knew a lot more what we wanted to do. We learned so much from those first two albums and um, yeah, it, it came together really easily and we had some really great people that we were working with as well. So everything kind of just fell together really nicely. Okay, so how was the writing and recording for this album? Um, so I actually write all the music for the band, um, but then we come together as a group and kind of define um, those songs. So um, the writing of the album for me took uh, probably took about a year, um, but uh, yeah. Yeah, and then the recording process was awesome. We uh, we got this guy Sam Sproul from Australia. He came over, and uh, he produced the record for us. And uh, he was he's worked with a lot of like big rock bands in New Zealand and Australia. Um, and so this was his kind of chance to jump into something a whole lot heavier. And um, he loves heavy music as well. So it was awesome to work with him and be able to you know, have an opportunity to bring fresh new ideas from like a production perspective. Um, so yeah, it was really cool. Really, really cool. And we recorded the whole album in seven days. Okay. Do you think that the current situation had any part in the making of this album? Um, the, the situation worldwide right now um, hadn't really kicked off when we were making the album, but we were dealing with a lot of stuff that was happening in our own country anyway. So I think, um, you know, there's a lot of like trauma and there's a lot of like um, real stuff that's happened to us as five people that comes through on this album. I think, um, you know, New Zealand, we've had natural disasters. Um, we've had like terrorist attack, that kind of stuff. And in a small country with not a massive population, um, all that kind of stuff affects people that you know. So, like, um, yeah, I, I guess like the traumas and and stuff that we've all experienced, it's it's all kind of created this album, and and it's kind of been cathartic in a way. But um, you know, at the same time, you don't want to go through any of that stuff, but you need an outlet as well. So, you know. <laughs> Yeah, you as you said, you started out as a more of a death metal band. So, uh, was the idea all the, always to like progress into more progressive uh, direction, or how do you see the evolution of your sound? Um, I, I don't think we've ever really had a plan. Everything just kind of happened. But um, back in the day when we were just straight up death metal um we didn't really care so much um about what we were doing but as time went on and, and we progressed as musicians um i think we all together felt like we wanted to do something um a bit more meaningful than just straight up death metal not that death metal is not meaningful because i you know that's my bread and butter i love death metal but um yeah, we, we kind of have all different wants and needs from music. So we try to sort of cater to everything. And, um, you know, we have so much different inspirations and, and um, you know, niche sort of music that, that we like that it all ends up in this kind of melting pot and you end up with blindfolded. <laughs> okay, was there like a discussion because of the time we are having now that... Uh if you're going to put the album out now or later, was that a discussion that you had? Yeah. Yeah. We, we did discuss that. Um, we, we did kind of think at, at one point that maybe we would sit on it and, and wait to see if all this stuff kind of blows over. Cause ultimately we do want to get overseas and tour, but um, you know, we're we're still writing music in the background and we're still going to have more music to put out there so um eventually there'll be another album and you know who knows what will happen for you know in, in the near future but I, d I don't really myself see 
things changing that quickly in a global perspective. So we kind of just were like, let's just put it out there. You know, we've got video clips that we're doing and, um, you know, th there's so many opportunities now for like live streaming uh, gigs and all that kind of stuff. So we kind of want to be there and sink our teeth into that kind of evolving music scene that's happening now um, and be able to be a part of that. Yeah, you mentioned the videos and there's actually uh, two videos already out from the upcoming album and also maybe a streaming gig. So um, how important are those visuals for you and where does the inspiration for those come from? Uh, the video clips for us has been um, like an awesome, awesome experience because the previous albums, we didn't really do too much visual stuff, but for this album, we had so many ideas visually and artistically that match up with the music. So it was really important for us to actually be able to release these videos and, and make them. Um, we were lucky enough to work with Sev Deans on the first video, which uh, also has Carl Sanders from Nile on the track, which is like crazy. But um, that video was made in the USA um, and we didn't feature in it whatsoever. <laughs> and uh, then the latest one that just dropped uh, the start of the weekend uh, we're actually in that video and that's the first video we've ever been in for our own music. So <laughs> that, that was cool as well. Um, and we're really happy with the response to both of those videos. Um, yeah. And we're just going to keep pushing them and trying to get them in front of as many people as we can. Okay. And how did the uh, uh, collaboration with Carl happen? I, I, I imagine he didn't, at this current situation he didn't probably come to New Zealand or <laughs> no 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 he wasn't he wasn't around but um we actually had the opportunity to tour with Nile and that was like right at the start of COVID and Nile's my all-time favorite band like they are my favorite out of all music all genres and um so getting the chance to tour with them, I was just like, yes, you know, this is a dream come true. And then COVID happened and it all got canceled. So that was that done and dusted. But uh, we were lucky enough that uh, Ben from Valhalla touring here in New, uh, touring here in New Zealand, he uh, put us in touch with Niles management and we kind of ended up starting a conversation with Carl and uh, we just happened to be recording the album at the time um, and we were doing the vocals um, while we were talking with him and then we just had a whole bunch of back and forth. We sent him the track. He absolutely loved the track um, and was just like, right, let's do it. Let's, you know, what do you want me to do? I'll do some vocals on it. And we just did a whole bunch of back and forth um, and then ended up with the track and you know, for for me and and our other guitarist Ben, especially, you know, Niall has been like it's such a massive part of our friendship as well. So um, having him on the track is just like, you know, I, it, I'm still speechless to this day that he's on a track with us. 